Namaste. I am Gloria Grace Rand coming to you pre-recorded this time <laughs> on, uh, on YouTube anyway, because uh, normally on Wednesdays, I record uh, these solo episodes where sometimes I do an interview episode and I send them out on social media. It goes out to Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube. However, I live in Florida and as I'm recording this today, we've got a nasty storm hurricane heading our way and so I decided that it might be better to just go ahead and pre-record this one uh, just in case we lose power or something like that. So I am delighted, I love to say, I am delighted to be with you today and and again this is this is going to be a solo episode and I wanted to talk with you, well actually I want to ask you a question first. So when was the last time you had an idea, you had an inspiration, and you acted on it? You didn't just have that great idea and kind of sit on it a little bit and then just say, well, you know, start having second thoughts and maybe it's not such a good idea and, and then you let it go. Well, it's, it is. It's one thing to be inspired, but it's another thing to follow through on those ideas. And let's face it, human beings, um, we procrastinate. <laughs> we are definitely procrastinators. And I know I have procrastinated. I've done my share of that and, and still do occasionally. And there are other times, though, when I do have an inspiration and I take action. And I wanted to share with you today uh, how I did that recently and, and the benefits of it truly, the benefits of following through on that inspired action because that's how you get things done, frankly, and especially normally when you are inspired. You know, sometimes you'll get ideas, right? But I'm talking about like a really big juicy inspiration of like, oh, I really want to do this. I really want to do this. This excites me. This lights me up. So it's that type of thing. Oh, I had that inspiration about a little over three months ago now. And it was, I was inspired to host a women's retreat. And so this was back in June. I had the idea and I wanted to do it in September because in September I was celebrating my 60th birthday. And I had been on a retreat five years ago that happened to coincide with my birthday weekend. And it was really a wonderful experience. And so I decided, yeah, I would thought about doing a retreat for years and never, never went about it. I'd even bought a domain name, I think back in 2018, was, was looking it up. Uh, and it was called Unplugged to Recharge dot us was the domain. And I, and I thought that's perfect. Okay, it's dot US because it stands for United States. But if you read it, it's unplugged to recharge us. Isn't that perfect? That's, that's the perfect domain, or at least in my humble opinion, <laughs> anyway. So I had this idea and I sent out an email and I got great feedback that yes, people were interested in it. And so I ran with it. I got into action. So what did I do? Well, I created a landing page. Well, first off, I had to find the weekend. So I found a good weekend right before my birthday. I loved the idea of it because the Saturday had a full moon. I thought, ooh, I can do some sort of full moon activity. And that just seemed perfect. And so I created a landing page for it and, and all of the, uh, the content from it just sort of flowed out of me. And then Let's see, I, then I had to find a, a location, of course. Now I wanted to have it someplace near me. Um, however, everything was booked up, but I didn't let that stop me. I, I just kept asking around, you know, I asked other people and then mm -hmm, light bulb struck again. In fact, I think I was in, I, I was getting ready to go to sleep one night. In fact, when this idea popped into my head and I, I give that to the universe helping me out here, it dawned on me that, wait a minute, I had talked to uh, someone that I'd met at a networking meeting or, or at a workshop years ago, and I'd actually just reconnected with her. And she has a vacation rental that she is has remodeled and is renting it out for workshops and retreats. So the next morning, contacted Jessica, 
and said, hey, is your house available on this weekend in September? And she said, yes. So again, it's like, ooh, everything seems to be lining up. Now the fun begins because it's one thing again to have an idea and it's one thing to decide that you want to put on an event like this. It's another thing to actually have it happen because the experts, and I'm using air quotes here, the experts and the gurus will tell you, you need at least six to nine months to be able to promote uh, an event, especially something in person. And of course, you know, as we've been coming out of the pandemic and things like that, not everybody is still keen on maybe meeting in person, but I wanted to do this in person. Yes, I could have done a virtual retreat, but ah, being in person, that's where all the wonderful connections happen, really. So I had to start promoting this event. I had to start marketing it. So I sent out emails to my list. I started creating graphics for it and I put a cover image on my Facebook uh, Facebook profile advertising the event. I created a Facebook event. I created a LinkedIn event and invited people to it. I started making phone calls to people that I knew and that I thought might be interested in this. I sent Facebook messages, I sent text messages, and on and on. Now, I will say that one wonderful thing happened was that early on, uh, someone who I had met online, haven't met her in person, uh, she saw me post about it and she contacted me and said, oh, this sounds good, Gloria, I wanna know more. And so we jumped on a phone call, had a lovely conversation. I've actually talked to her on the phone before. And it, she was just, I'm there, I'm signing up. And she did, and she, she invested in the retreat. And that was so cool, it was like, yes. And I got to post that and say, hey, I've got my first person who signed up for the retreat. Because people like to see <laughs> that people are coming because then it's like, oh, okay, maybe this event is really gonna happen. And so that gives them more confidence to make a decision. And as I was doing all of this, I did something else that was very important because the marketing, marketing is very important. I, and I. Actually, I did talk about this and I did a whole episode. If you go back and look on, on the podcast, I did one back in June, I think, called, uh, I think, Why Attend a Retreat? So that was my first way of you know, letting people know about this. And I just lost where I was going to go with this. Okay. Oh, okay. So yes, I remember now. So marketing is important and you, you really do need to show up as many different places as you can and, and do it frequently. And, you know, I emailed my list a couple of times, not just, not just once, but a few times and letting them know as, as I was getting things together, as I was creating ideas about what we we're going to do at the retreat, things like that to bring people up to speed. So that was one part of it. The inspired action part, absolutely important. The other, the other part of the other action that I did was a process called visualization because the mental work is also very, very important when you want to be able to create something. And so I journaled about it I, and I journaled how grateful I was that the people, the perfect people came to this retreat and they had a wonderful time and, and they just got so much out of it and I received wonderful testimonials about it. And then I also would do this visualization uh, like a meditation where I would really visualize myself actually driving home from the retreat, just feeling so happy and joyful that everything turned out the way I did, even, even better than I had dreamed of. And, and, it just, and I, I created a lot of emotion in my body, just a lot of joy and gratitude. And I did that consistently, <laughs> you know, just about every single day I would do that visualization. And as the day it got closer and closer to the retreat, I still had only one person signed up. And then finally, I had a couple people sign up. And then I had another person who came, she couldn't do it for the whole weekend, but she came for the day. And then about two days before the retreat, that first lovely woman who was going to attend, who signed up right away, had a family emergency and she wasn't able to, to attend. So. I only had two people actually spend the entire weekend with me and, and then a third person came on Saturday. And I will tell you 
when I drove home from the retreat on Sunday. I was listening to some music. I was smiling from ear to ear because the retreat ended up better than I had expected. And I have since received glowing testimonials from the people who attended. <sighs> I just got like God bumps <laughs> remembering that. So the lesson I wanna share with you today in all of this is when you are inspired and it is really something that lights you up, take action and keep taking action. Don't just let it be one thing, but take multiple actions. You know, I was, I, I had to find a location. I had to get a date. I had to uh, start get it, getting supplies for my retreat. I had to figure out a budget. I had to market the retreat and I keep marketing the retreat. And, and that's, that's a lesson also is that don't ever give up. Keep marketing up until the last minute and then just go with the flow. You know, I didn't let the fact that one person said she wasn't going to make it ruin the entire weekend because I still decided that the perfect people were coming. And, and it would have been even more perfect had she been there, but I know she will make it the next time around. And do provide incentives for registering. So I didn't do an early bird. I will do an early bird price the next time. However, I did do a one day price, which enabled a friend of mine to be able to come. And so I will make sure that I have that option the next time around as well. So I hope you, um, you receive some value from that today. And, and again, so when you have an idea, take action and, and not only the practical things, but also do the inner work because I do believe that the journaling and the visualizing absolutely made a huge difference in this event being successful for me. So I hope you will keep that in mind as well. And if you need some tips on how to promote things, you know, how to promote an event on social media, I've been doing it for quite a long time. And so I would love to give you some pointers. If you want, you can reach out to me at engagewithgloria.com and uh, make an appointment and, and let's have a chat. Now, when I do our my solo episodes, I do like to share with you a daily word. And today, I found one that was, the daily word was um, taking action. And this one is from April 21st of 2002. So the affirmation says, as I take action, God's universe supports me with new opportunities. It's, uh, and then the actual lesson says, have I prayed and prayed and yet it seems the answer to a dilemma is not forthcoming? Then I stop and think. Have I already received an answer as opportunities before me, but not taken action on them? So I listen to God's guidance, becoming aware of how to take those first action steps. And then I discover that everything in God's universe seems to align in support of my willingness to move forward. New opportunities continue to appear. I only need to take one step at a time and God shows me the next and the next. I am amazed at how quickly God's plan for me unfolds when I am willing to take even the first small action steps toward my goal. And then there's a scripture reading. This is from Luke 12, 35 to 36. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. And I love that, don't you? I think that's a really good one. It's, it really is, it's about being prepared and then and taking action. So I, I'm proud of myself, yeah. I'm proud of myself that I took action and that I'm so grateful to everyone who helped me out too. Cause I also have people who were sharing this, you know, the retreat for me and they were reaching out to me how they could help. And that's God 
working for me. You know, that's God showing me the next step, the next step. So let God do that for you. So take the inspired action, do the visualization work, and then see what miracles come about for you. Now, I would love to share with you a light language message of love and light for you to perhaps give you some, either give you some inspiration or inspire you to take action on maybe something that you've had some ins inspiration about, but you haven't really moved forward yet. And uh, for those of you who may be tuning into this episode for the first time and you're like, what the heck is light language? Well, <laughs> Google it. And I will, I will give you the short version, which is essentially it's a, uh, it's a channeled message from higher realms, uh, angels, other beings, perhaps star beings, maybe. But it's really a message of love and light. And I encourage you to listen to it with an open heart and an open mind, but mostly an open heart and just let what comes through wash over you and connect with your soul today. And if you are listening to this while you're driving, you might want to listen to this later <laughs> when you're sitting down, um, just so that you can focus in on it and not have to have your attention diverted with making sure that you're driving safely, because I want you to be safe. Okay, all right, so relax and receive the message when in the spirit of love that it is being shared with you today. Kanyo kiate sonyo kwanakiate kohoyena Sakoyo no kushina ye Kanyo no kohe so uchuna E kosho no kaya no ki Sonyo no koshi Sonyo no kore tatsi ha Onyo ku ka sinyo ne Kono no kohe sa no he Ho Eka sonira kolna hiya Eka eka he 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 ko hi shonyo no kiya ne Ha so konyo no koye Ha sonyo ni ko ki ko ni Aoso kiya He sonyo no kaya pata he kosho to kuriya na ni, also to shokuriya na ni akata, he sakonyo no no kiyata, ha koshi kato tu, ha nyo ne ka. And I, you may have noticed a little extra sound in there that was not planned. I, uh, this is what happens when you do something different and out of the ordinary is I forgot to mute my phone. <laughs> so, but I'm not gonna record this over again because it's all, it all, it's all in divine order. It all happened in divine timing. It may, you may not even hear it on the recording. I'm gonna set the intention that you're like, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I only heard the light language. So hopefully that's what you heard. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so grateful for those of you who are uh, regular subscribers of the podcast and for those of you who watch us on YouTube as well and are subscribed there. I am very grateful for you. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or your evening whenever you're watching this or listening to it. And until next time, you know what I'm going to say, right? I hope so. If you are a subscriber, you know, you know what I'm going to say. 
I encourage you to go out and live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically.